recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. The cream of the crop. Hey everyone, welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil, and I will be your host today. Joining me in the studio is a full house with Jeff, Ken, and Matt. How's it going, guys? Good, and I'm feeling there's definitely going to be a lack of seriousness today. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit of knowledge. Good. We got all bases covered then. Yeah, uh, last week was uh, sort of a rough game, a uh, two-on-two match with uh, Matt and myself and our guests, uh, Ryan and Justine, but it was fun. And uh, everyone, I think, was well-rested enough for this week's game, so hopefully it'll be pretty fun. Uh, today's game should actually be a fun one, since the the holidays just passed us. I've had a good amount of Question 5 submissions, and uh, I wanted to use as many as I could this game, uh, including a special round two, which I will talk about in a little bit. But uh, just to kick things off, thank you to Matt Hiller, Matt Coleman, Sam Carr, Dave Maslowski, John Barry, and Tim Evans. Um, you guys know the drill. If you want to send in a Question 5 submission, send us an email to trivialitypodcasts at gmail.com with the subject line Question 5 and the name of the host you want to read it. That way none of us will peek on accident. Uh, so if you guys are, are ready... Um, Everyone here knows the rules. Uh, we have two rounds of 10 questions each worth 10 points apiece. There's a swing round in the middle designed by me, which today is going to be a little light, but uh, I don't think you guys are going to do well on it, but it's mostly guessing, <laughs> so I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt there. You could say that about any round, to be honest. Exactly. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And then the final round uh, is going to be five questions uh, with categories where you can wager uh, 0 to 30 points uh, based on your confidence. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. I am the cream! Uh, without further ado, why don't we just... Get right into it, guys. Jump right in. Let's, jump right let's in. Let's triviality, guys. Let's triviality. Let's triviality. All right. Question one is uh, going to be from Matt Hiller, and he tells us in an email, which I thought was fun, I feel like I would be derelict in my duties as a member of the Chicago Curling Club if I didn't invite all of you to look into a learn to curl. After Matt missed a question a couple of weeks ago about curling, I'm sure you would all like to brush up on your curling knowledge. That's rude. Yeah. So uh, well, <laughs> I actually looked it up. Uh, Learn to curl looks really cool. So definitely check that out on Google uh, for the Chicago Curling Club. But uh, let's hope some of you actually Googled curling or if we'll need to take Matt up on his invitation to go curl with him. So here's your question. In the sport of curling, within three pounds, how much does the average stone or rock weigh? So, yeah, the rock weighs about two eighty five. Wouldn't, so. uh, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, I looked wouldn't it up the... yesterday. He's actually two sixty. Damn, cutting weight. I've never picked one up, but you know they're not struggling. So I got. Oh yeah, that's true. Hold on, I'm out. Oh wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm in. Uh, I I have an answer. Okay. Uh, I'll stick with my gut. All right. So uh, Ken was in first. So let's start with Ken. So at first I went like 35 pounds, but they do like lift them up and like hold them out like with their with their arm and then place them on the ice. So there's no way. I mean, it's possible, but that's pretty heavy to hold out in front of you. I went with uh, 20 pounds. Okay. Let's go to Still Matt. Still pretty heavy. Yeah, I, I was in the same boat as Ken. I know that they have to have enough mass to kind of travel all the way down there, um, but I think they're light enough for somebody to kind of hold out with one arm. So I said 18 pounds. All right. And Jeff? I'm thinking I'm, I'm really high. I said 40 pounds. All right. Well, uh, only one of you is going to get points on this one, and that's going to be Jeff. Ooh. So a... Uh, curling stone or rock is equivalent to the weight of approximately 131 baseballs or 101 wow. softballs which would be the wow. weight of 42 pounds so uh you're you could have said uh, 39 to 45 on that one little shout out just... to our friends uh number 42 now yeah. i won't forget this number so when, when they have it out in front of them is it just floating along the ice i, I believe it's or it's gliding they, on the ice yeah they don't lift it out no up in no. front of them no. oh that's why okay. and i didn't i can't really confirm this i was reading a little bit about curling um from matt's question i believe they actually put the the stone or the rock on the ice i, I figured it's like 72 hours beforehand so it, it acclimates to the cold question two you'll quickly realize this is a neil question Let's all pretend you guys are part of a cannibal dating site and met a nice person to take on a first date. You go to a cannibal-friendly Italian restaurant, and your date requests tonight's special, toasted alveoli with sage walnut butter. What part of the human body would you most likely be eating if you get the alveoli? Mm. Shout out to all our cannibal listeners out there. Mm. No judging. Cannibal corpse fans. 
I was going to make a cannibal corpse <laughs> reference. Of course you were. Uh, sage walnut butter sounds good, though. Sage walnut butter can make any body part taste good. That's what I hear. Yeah. At least that's what Guy Fieri told me. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, the flavor town. My query here is whether alveoli is a like a uh, anatomy term or an Italian food term that would refer to a specific like cut of meat or you know body part. Uh, to clarify for the listeners and for Ken. Uh, well, you don't have to. Okay. But that's where my confusion is. Mm-hmm. I, I I know exactly where you're coming from. I have an answer. I'm in. This is this is not one I'm familiar with. So, uh, but I've got an answer. All right. Uh, let's start with Jeff on this one since he he's on the board already. Uh, I said uh, tongue. Okay. All right. Tongue. Let's go to Matt. I was thinking liver. All right. And let's go to Ken. Oh, with the eyes. All all very good answers. Uh, <laughs> if I told you that they were small balloon-like sacs at the end of small air passages, lungs. it would be in your lungs. Uh, Aveoli. Av- Aveoli. Yeah, which is exactly... That was the word I had in mind, but I couldn't remember what it was for. So and, it was uh, totally... <laughs> Yeah, there there is a, a recipe for ravioli with sage nut butter, and I just said, hey, alveoli, alveoli could work really well with that. So, uh, man, the pronunciation just I, even when I read it on the on the screen here that Neil provided today, it didn't take away the pronunciation that Neil said. All right, uh, we're gonna move right along to question three. According to Advertising Age's 200 leading national advertising list for 2017 which, by the way, is ranked by total U.S. advertising spending in 2016, what automotive company is ranked highest at number three behind Procter & Gamble and Comcast Core? So this is just U.S. spending dollars. U.S. spending dollars in advertising, and uh, only one automotive company is ranked. uh, This is the highest ranked automotive company. They spend the most. They spend the most on advertising. I am in. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to think too hard about this one. This one really bothers me because I'm trying to think about how the, the money is allocated. Um, you guys are both in, right? Yeah. yeah. I will okay. say advertising age is usually um, uh, media, probably like TV commercials. Right. Yeah. Um, I think we're all thinking Ford here, um, but Mercedes-Benz and Audi both spend a considerable amount of money at like um, very visible venues. Like they buy like the middle of the Super Bowl advertisements um soccer team endorsements um but i think it's just u.s only dollars so i think i'm gonna go with ford and i don't think i'm gonna be alone on that one Mm -hmm. yeah i went with ford too yeah i watch very little live television and i feel like i see a ford commercial every 10 minutes so all right so you all went with ford so i'll have to look at the list for the exact number here if you want to know but i believe ford is actually second uh, in spending Mm -hmm. uh, and i believe they're like number 10 uh, total but uh general motors the answer General Motors. Mm. So you got to think about all those Chevy commercials we're hit over the head with, with the guy going, uh, look at the, all these awards this uh, Chevy oh, Traverse is yeah. It's not even that, though, because every time you see a Cadillac right. or a GMC commercial, mm-hmm. those are all also General Motors. I hate so. those commercials, too, because the people are like, whoa. But to be fair, like they really care. Ford has a, all those F-150 truck commercials, right. and Every Matthew McConaughey commercial is a Ford commercial because that's Lincoln, right. which is the same Ford Motor Company. We didn't but those set are out to make a masterpiece. I was driving Lincolns before they were cool. Before I get in my car, I like to fall in the pool. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I, I thought uh, you know General Motors um, has more, like Jeff said, more cars under their wings. So it was a nice giveaway there. Um, all right, so moving on to question four. And uh, this one actually comes from our listener and Patreon supporter, Sam Carr, who gave us a great rules breakdown last week. So thank you, Sam, for this question. Question four. This word is said to have originated from French workers throwing their clogs into machines as part of labor protests. While the French source word does refer to wooden shoes and the first usage was related to labor protests, the word literally means to walk noisily which is sure to make all y'all listen. What word is that? Um, I kind of get where this is going. The um, the clue at the end, I don't understand. It's probably a pop music clue. It is. Yeah. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, I will say that the clue at the end is uh, music related. All right, I'm in with an incomplete answer or a bad guess. Yeah. 
All right. Looks like everyone is. Are you in, Matt? Yeah. Okay. It looks like everyone is in with an answer. Uh, Ken was in first, so let's start with Ken. Yeah, I was just thinking like romp or stomp, but I went with uh, stomp. <laughs> stomp. Okay. Let's go to Jeff. I too went stomp. Hey, let's make it three stomp. Ah, three stomps there. Uh, so uh, the clue at the end, uh, make sure all y'all listen that uh, Sam provided, is actually the lyrics are listen all y'all because it's a sabotage. Oh, sabotage. So, um, oh, yeah. Sabots, That's much f- more French. Sabot is the word for clog in yeah. French. So French clogs. Uh, anarch- yep. So uh, Sam provided us some, some background here. Anarchists uh, Emile Pouget and Paul de la Salle recommended that French labor unions adopt a policy of work slowdowns and inefficiencies. This term, in this sense, implied that people wearing wooden shoes would walk slower. So that's your answer. I had heard that like a decade ago. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so uh, we're going to be going to question five, then I'll do a little score update. Uh, I'm excited about question five. From one of our favorite listeners in Australia and Patreon supporter, John Barry. So thank you, John. He knows how much Jeff and I like Australian rules football. Go Carlton. And uh, go Collingwood. And he gave us some great questions, but they were pretty hard for anyone not familiar with the game. He gave me some really hard Sydney Swans questions that no one would get. Plugger. Uh, so he sent me some easier questions, and this is how it's going to work for today's purposes. I'm going to give you two questions in one. Uh, Jeff can only answer one of those. He has to confirm which one he's answering to get the 10 points. Ken and Matt, you can try answering both, and whichever one, if you get them right, then you'll get the points as well. Uh, anyone at playing at home, you just need to get one of those questions right out of these two, and, and I, you can score yourself as having 10 points. You can't get 20 on the question, So though. basically, we get two guesses. Jeff gets one. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So here are the two questions. Number one, the MCG is the 10th largest stadium in the world and is the home field for many footy teams. What does MCG stand for? Okay, I'm not answering that one. <laughs> and number two, what two colors of football do they use in the AFL? One is usually used before 3 p.m. during the daytime, and the other is used at night. I will confirm with one. Okay. And I am in. I met Ron Barassi at the MCG. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice guy. Mm. Unfortunately, <clears throat> it was during a Collingwood game. Mm. I had the privilege of playing at the MCG at halftime, which is a lot of fun. There was a lot of people screaming at us, uh, probably not nice things but uh we were able to play a, a scrimmage game uh with our school that we went there with and it was a lot of fun really really cool stadium if you get a chance to go all yeah. right all right so everyone is in so uh let's start with ken all right so uh i went with the colors question okay uh i know jeff had a uh, australian rules football uh and i i've laid my hands on it a time or two and i think it was like yellow so yellow is one of the colors I picked. I didn't know about the other one, and I went with black. Okay. Um, do we get to answer both of them? Yeah, you get to answer you, both. You do. Ken I don't. just said he didn't I've, want to answer the no first one. I have no idea for oh, the first that's, ones. that's fine, because I put Monster Coliseum Guy Holder for the first one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's probably not right. Uh, I also went with yellow, because I figured at night it would make sense for them to use a yellow ball. Um, I had watched it on, foot, on uh, TV once, but it was like on a 16-inch. Um, so it was kind of hard to make on the ball, but I put red for the other one. Okay, and let's go to Jeff. And Jeff only gets to answer one of these questions. Which one did you answer? I will only answer the first one because okay. nobody really took a stab at that. A little bit of a trick. doesn't have a reference to football. It is the Melbourne Cricket Grounds. Mm-hmm. So so Melbourne Cricket Ground uh, for question one. Uh, Ken, unfortunately, did not get points for uh, the second question. You were very close. So one is yellow. They use that at nighttime. Uh, to, to see better, uh, but uh, Matt is correct. It is red. <laughs> wow. Yes. Provided by the company Sharon, uh, making those leather footballs. Um, and Matt, uh, luckily Matt is uh, part of the Australian Rules Football for Beginners Facebook group that I started, but we still haven't <laughs> played yet, but we will because I want to play with you guys. But yeah, great job. So it uh, looks like after five questions, uh, Ken is uh, behind, unfortunately. He's got zero <laughs> points. Uh, Matt has 10 points, and Jeff has 20 points. Moving on to question six. 42nd Street might be a good place to start if you're looking for one of these, which can be found by combining a predecessor to the Euro in Italy and an abnormal membranous sac or cavity containing fluid. What am I looking for? So I want you to find those two words, put them together, and you'll answer what I'm looking for on 42nd Street in New York, if you want me to be more specific. 
So 42nd Street in New York. I'm in. All right. I'm, I think Ken might have gotten it. I think he had a light bulb there. This is a really dumb answer. I'm pretty proud of it. It's going to be probably no surprise to anybody that I know the Italian currency. If, well, if you say that. Yeah. What do you know about sex? Well, all right. They're locked in. So <laughs> <laughs> they're locked in. I what? know everything there is to know about sex. Gold, Lay it on me. Goldman Sachs. All right. Everyone is in uh, with the uh, least amount of certainty is Jeff. So what's your <laughs> I answer disagree. there? <laughs> so I know the Italian currency is the lira. So I said lira gland. Oh. All right. Matt? I put spaghetti balloon. Spaghetti <laughs> balloon? Okay. Uh, before I let Ken answer, I believe he got it right. Uh, Matt and Jeff, anything about 42nd Street in New York that brings to mind no, anything? It's just a... What happens there? I'm not familiar with your second home, Neil. So. Yeah, it's a concrete jungle. There's a lot of, made of... Uh, most of the Broadway shows around 42nd Street. Ken? So it's the Lyric Opera, right? Nope. Ken? No. Well, it's close. Um, I think... I'm not positive. So I got as far as the Lyra, and then I thought of uh, the various member to sex that I know, and I got to cyst, so I went with lyricist. The answer is lyricist. Makes sense. Ken's on the board. Ken is on the board with 10 points. Mm-hmm. Feels good. Feels with a, so with a good. clever answer, too. All right, so on to question seven. It's a little bit of a music and, uh, I guess, uh, language question, I, I suppose. American hip-hop and rock band N.E.R.D. just released a new album. The title is the same as the meaning of their own backronym. What does N.E.R.D. stand for? I just read this, like, yesterday. And for those that don't know, this is the band fronted by Pharrell. Okay, I'm in. All right, Ken is in. This is kind of a know-it or you don't question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm having a rough game. Okay, I'm in. All right, down to Jeff feeling like Matt and myself felt last week. I was uh I was going to try and come up with a joke answer, but I can't get something that fits the acronym, so I've got nothing. <laughs> All right, so Jeff uh, is punting on this question. Let's go to Matt. I think I think it's close. I don't know if this is right, but it's uh no one ever really dies. Okay. And let's go to Ken. I uh went with what I have for uh the answer to this question, which is no eloquent response, dude. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, so he might have been the most uncertain, but it is no one ever yeah. really dies. <laughs> like I said, I just saw this. So I must have clicked. It's it's on the album title, right? Yeah, their newest album is the name of their band. Yeah. yeah. No one ever really dies. It's a tongue with, with the title. Uh, all right. Uh, so going to question eight, it's uh, also coming from a listener, from listener Dave Maslowski. So thank you, Dave, for giving me this question. I thought it was uh, it was pretty sweet. Uh, I might make the question a little easier if you guys need help, but hopefully you won't. Uh, The question is, at the 2016 Oscars, three films were nominated with lead characters named Joy. Name two of them. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at current movies. I don't know. Yeah, I'm terrible at this. All right, I wrote two joke answers. Mm, Let me think of real movies. All right, is everyone in? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so uh, let's start with Jeff. So I feel like one of them might be La La Land, but uh, as a joke, I wrote uh, The Joy Luck Club. And the joy formidable. Oh, okay, all right, good band. Uh, let's go to Matt. Uh, I put it and Suicide Squad. Okay, some kind of Suicide Squad. <laughs> all right, and <laughs> Ken. So, um, Jeff, I believe it was the year previous to La La Land. Ah. Um, so one of them was actually called Joy, and I think um, Brie Larson's character in the room was named Joy as well. All right, so. Played by Brie Larson, the voice of Amy Poehler and Jennifer Lawrence. The films were Room, Inside Out, and Joy. Oh, that would have been Inside Out. I did know that one. I didn't know that was 2016. Didn't matter. I would have gotten the other two wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, that's another 10 points for Ken. Very nice. Uh, all right. Question I'm, I'm nine. coming up in the world. Uh, this one is is uh, kind of a Matt question, but I thought it was very interesting. Uh, this is coming from listener Matt Coleman. Yeah, Matt's it's very much a Matt question. Yeah, and, yeah, it's very. Yeah, we've had two Matt questions today already. What is the oldest continuous sports franchise Ugh. in the U.S. with no changes in team name or location? So other franchises might be older, but they have either changed their names or locations mm-hmm. in that period of time. But this franchise has not. They began their operation and have always continuously been this team. The location one is hard because there are quite a few teams that have never changed their names that have been around. We're talking for... about cities, not stadiums, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, this would be... Sports team. Yeah, the city and team name. Um, Because there's a lot of them that have been around for a while, but they've like barely moved. Like they tear down a stadium and they put one up across the street. All right. Everyone's in? Yep. All right. Let's start with Ken. Uh, I think it would probably be an MLB team. I just went with the Cubs because I don't know. Okay, he went with the Cubs. Uh, let's go to Jeff. Um, I thought the Cub. I thought there was another team in Chicago before the Cubs, but uh, I could be wrong. Um, so I tried not to get distracted by the pinstripes, and I went with the Yankees. All right, Matt. Yeah, I, I mean, I threw out basketball uh, right away. I threw football um, out right away too. And hockey, the original six go back only so far. And, right. Um, so and did they all come in at the same time? The same that was what time, I was trying so to think. So it couldn't be any. Right. Of the, none of them could be longer than the other ones. Right. So I went right to baseball. Uh, and Boston, uh, you know, they they were the Braves, I think, at first before they moved, and then, and the then they were the Red Stockings. And, so yeah. I also went with New York Yankees. All right. Unfortunately, no points on the board here. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a little teasing before I give the answer out. So when the franchise was founded in 1883, they replaced a team from Worcester, Massachusetts. It is not the Red Sox, though. It is the Philadelphia Phillies. Mm-hmm. Huh. I The Phillies were on my short list. Yeah. So as I said, uh, they began operation and have continuously been the Philadelphia Phillies since 1883. Other franchises might be older, but they have either changed names or locations in that period. Well, we had the right sport. <laughs> yeah, Philadelphia had a team. They had two teams, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the athletics were from there at the same time and then moved. Yeah, when Matt said Philadelphia at first, I was like, oh, he's going to get there. But he was talking about the, uh, the Philadelphia athletic, yeah. athletics. So, uh, All right. Well, thank you, Matt. Uh, on to question 10, the last one of this round. This one I'm... Kind of uh, excited about because I just discovered this uh, this answer. So um, here we go. This Korean boy band must have success in their DNA as they are taking over America by storm. Named top social artist in 2017 by the Billboard Music Awards, their name loosely translates to Bulletproof Boy Scouts. They're one of the most popular groups in the world right now, taking the world by storm. Yeah, okay, so I'm very familiar with this, and I just need to make sure I get it right, because I'm about to mess it up. Yeah. Um, I don't even know who you're talking about. Yeah, I watched a, a YouTube video yesterday that had the top 10 uh, Vimo music videos of 2017, um, from around the world and like six of them were from Latin America and there was two like Korean ones and one of these they I were think. the the first Korean boy band or Korean group for that matter to perform at the American Music Awards too yeah. like they're really popular right now hmm. I'm in I don't know it All right. everyone is in yep all right before I say the answer the clue there was a uh, success in their DNA because they're one of their hit songs is called DNA uh, let's go with Matt I think it's like an acronym that spells something but I just put, I think it's like chosen. So that's what I said. Okay. I um, put the only Korean artist I know, Psy. Psy, all right. I believe this is a three letter name. And I think the first letter is B. And I was having trouble with the other two letters. And I was trying my best not to put BTK because that's a BTK killer. <laughs> I went with uh, BTS, but I might still be wrong. Well, um, Ken can pat himself on the back. It is BTS. Mm. Never heard of them. So their name uh, literally translates to Bulletproof Boy Scouts. Uh, the the actual name in Korean, if you guys uh, wanted to know, although I'm probably going to... Flawless yeah, Korean. This, yeah. Probably going to butcher this name, but uh, their name actually is uh, Bangton Sonyeondan, uh, literally meaning Bulletproof Boy Scouts. And in Japan, Jeff, they're known as uh, Bodan Shonadan. Ah. Uh. All right, so uh, low-scoring first round here, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll pick it up in the swing round in the second round. So uh, tied for second place right now are Jeff and Matt with 20 points, and uh, leading the pack right now is Ken with 30 points. All right, so the swing round today is going to be of the reality TV variety. Uh, My mom is a huge fan of the Real Housewives shows, so if you guys know anything about those shows, uh, this might help you out. I do not. Ken does not, Matt does not, and Jeff does not, but uh, hopefully we'll see what they can do here. Our second round is actually going to be a a special round today. So these halftime questions are going to be worth 10 points apiece to make up for that. I have 10 names in front of me. Those 10 names all belong to only five of the Real Housewives shows. And the the most popular Real Housewives shows are Orange County, 
New York, Atlanta, New Jersey, and Beverly Hills. So I have 10 names. Two names are going to be from each of those shows. So I'm going to name a person's name. Uh, as an example, Camille Grammer, Kelsey Grammer's one of his wives, was on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So Matt would say Beverly Hills, and he would get 10 points. And I get 10 points. Right, exactly. Right. So I have 10 names. I'm just going to name them. All you need to know is, are they from Orange County, New York, Atlanta, New Jersey, or Beverly Hills? Make sure you keep tallies so you know if two names have been used because only two names from each show are going to be are going to be used. So you guys ready? Sure. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Number one, Ramona Singer. Mm. Known for her wide eyes. Oh. That doesn't help. <laughs> Number two, Lisa Vanderpump and her mm. dog, Jiggy. Of the Vanderpump rules. Of Vanderpump rules, yes. Number three, Nene Leakes. <laughs> Nini Leakes. Number four, Kyle Richards. Mm. Number five, Tamara Judge. Oh, I don't like her. Number six, Kim Zolchak Bierman. Tardy for the party. That's a reference. <laughs> if anyone watched that show, you'll get number seven. Caroline Manzo, or Manzo, however you pronounce that. Number eight, Vicky Gunvilson. Number nine, Teresa Judice. And for you guys, I'll give you a hint in the studio, just released from jail, so congratulations, Teresa. Hmm. And number 10, Bethany Frankel, mm. or I know some of you enjoy a nice skinny girl martini on the weekends, mostly Matt. <laughs> so quickly, those names for the audience, Ramona Singer, Lisa Vanderpump and her dog Jiggy, Nene Leakes, Kyle Richards, Tamara Judge, Kim Zolchak Bierman, Caroline Monzo, Vicki Gunvalson, Teresa Judice. And Bethany Frankel. Just let me know when you guys are in. Don't know much else about this. Yeah. Jeff, any any frame of reference here? Yeah, you're a big Bravo fan, right? <laughs> Wondering what's taking so long. Yeah, his t-shirt says, I love Andy Cohen, but uh, his answers aren't coming in. How yeah. many of these names have you heard before? Zero of them. Well, then why? So what the f*** are you doing? <laughs> what do you mean, what am I doing? Why, why are you taking so long at this? Are you looking for context clues in the names? Yes. You're the worst. Yeah. And then uh, geographic cross Put the Italian ones on New York and New Jersey and First let's get the f*** on with it. Are you wow. kidding me? This, this dog sounds like he's from Atlanta. <laughs> it's fine. All right. Everyone is locked in with their answers. Not too sure over here, but uh, we'll see how they do. All right. Number one was Ramona Singer. Jeff, what do you have? Uh, Orange County. Okay. Ken? I went Atlanta. And Matt? New York. It is New York. Yeah. Ramona Singer, uh, known for her uh, ex wide expression in her eyes when she gets really drunk. Uh, number two, Lisa Vanderpump and her dog, Jiggy. Let's go, Jeff. Uh, I went New York. Okay, Ken. I went OC on that one. And Matt. I think that's the Beverly Hills. That is Beverly Hills. She owns Pump, uh, the bar, and she owns uh, uh, Sir, I'm sorry, Sir, the lounge, and Pump, the restaurant, which I uh, <laughs> frequented last time I was in L.A. All right. Joke's on you guys. I know all of these. Number three, you might have seen her... Uh, bombastic performance on the apprentice nini leaks let's go jeff i went atlanta all right ken new york all right matt atlanta it is atlanta <laughs> she had the fiery personality that made her a star all right number four kyle richards jeff beverly hills ken uh beverly hills and matt the oc Ooh, jeff and ken on the board on that oh. one beverly hills her sister kim richards uh, was the little girl who got shot in Assault on Precinct 13, John Carpenter film. Mm -hmm. They're related to the Hiltons. All right. Uh, number five, Tamara Judge. Uh, let's go, Jeff. Atlanta. All right. Ken? OC. All right. And Matt? New Jersey. It is the OC. Mm. Lucky guess. Number six, Kim Zolchak Bierman. Jeff? 
New York. Okay, Ken? New York. And Matt? I also went New York. It is Atlanta. Her husband uh, is Troy Beerman. Troy Beerman. The played football for the player. Falcons. And uh, Tardy for the Party is a terrible song she recorded because she thought she could have a singing career. And definitely YouTube those videos. Uh, number seven, Caroline Monzo. Jeff? New Jersey. All right. Ken? New Jersey. All right. And Matt? I went New York. It is New Jersey. So he gets mm-hmm. 10 points there. All right. Number eight, Vicki Gunvalson. Let's go to Jeff. Uh, Orange County. Okay. Ken? Atlanta. All right. Matt. Sounded like Beverly Hills to me. Well, she's Orange County's favorite realtor. Oh. It is Orange County. All right. Uh, number nine, Teresa Judice, straight from jail. Let's go to Jeff. New Jersey. All right. Ken. Jersey. Uh, and Matt. Atlanta. It is Jersey. Yeah. She's the famous one who flipped the table when she got really angry. So that's Teresa Judice. And our, our final one, number 10. Oh, okay. You guys, you guys know that that thing about flipping the table. I'm no. sure. No, no, I don't. All right. All right. We we literally guessed on every one of these. Neil, that is all correct. Right. I will just keep the pop culture in my corner then for for all of us. And uh, number ten, uh, Bethany Frankel, who is the proprietor of Skinny Girl Martinis. Jeff, um, I'd love to say I kept track of these to figure out which one I'm missing, <laughs> but uh, New York. All right, Ken. Beverly Hills. Matt. Orange County. It is New York. Yeah. Wow, you guys actually did surprisingly well there on that round. Yes, you know why? Because I use demographic information to make educated guesses. <laughs> Matt picked up 30 points, Ken picked up 40 points, and Jeff picked up 60 points. Wow. All right, well, this game just got a lot more interesting. The scores as they stand now are Matt in third place with 50 points, Ken in second place with 70 points, and uh, making his way into the lead is Jeff with 80 points. All right. I hated that a lot, Neil. I really did. <laughs> well, look, I didn't. I didn't like writing it, but no, uh, so then don't write it. I want to I I let you know that that was the least my least favorite thing that we've ever done on this show. So I far. hate so much about the things that you choose to write. <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> All right, everyone can shit on Neil today. I wanted. Uh, I wanted to boycott but, that round on ethical But statistically. Grounds. Many millions of people watch these shows. I'm sure someone out there, just someone back me up and get my corner here. It doesn't mean it's right. doesn't mean it's right, <laughs> but I also, I did not like the swing round where Jeff was making us do like world capitals because I, <laughs> I wanted to shoot myself. These are very First of all, similar I things. think the one you're talking about is countries that border the Mediterranean. So yes. if you had a map and ever looked at Europe, you should be able to figure out some. Well, well let's, uh, not all of us have done that. Jeff, let's, you got let's 60 keep punishing points. punishing each other. <laughs> School does not make you watch Bravo. Yes. So Jeff, you, you got a majority of these right, whether you guessed or not. So now you are a Bravo-holic, so deal with it. Okay, here we go. On to round two. Ooh. So I have something special for round two oh today. God. Listener Tim Evans, a.k.a. the Quiz Mercenary, has written in an entire round for our listening pleasure. I'll read his explanation on the rules of this round. He sent us an email. If you're in the Illinois area, check out Quiz Mercenary on Facebook to find the location where Tim runs trivia. So thanks, Tim. Here's his email. You are going to hear nine questions in various topics, and all are seemingly unrelated, and all nine are worth five points apiece. Easy for your math skills. I've been listening. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, you have been. Question number 10 in this round is worth 10 points, and it is simply, what is the connection? So the connection can be a portion of each answer or the whole thing, but there is a connection between all nine answers, and number 10 is what you will say that connection is. Is everyone understanding that? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Question one of round two. In 2007, Michael Vick was suspended indefinitely from the NFL for pleading guilty for dogfighting and was cut from the roster of what team? All right. Not for dogfighting, but for me knowing the answer. Dogfighting is wrong. Heard it here first. (laughs) Dogfighting is wrong. He's on a team that wears purple, I think. No. (laughs) Bengals? 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 Bengals. So. I'm going to go... No, wait, Jeff that's, that's Ocho Cinco. <laughs> How do you know Chad Ocho Cinco? Because his name is Chad Ocho Cinco. <laughs> it's Chad Johnson, but whatever. He yeah. had illegally changed. Not um, anymore. He's back. Okay. So not the Bengals, not the Vikings. <laughs> the Rams wear purple. 30 more. He's a quarterback. So far, so good. He's a quarterback. <laughs> when he got arrested for um, smuggling weed... He used a fake name, uh, Ron Mexico. <laughs> that does not sound like a smuggler. <laughs> light bulb went off in that. light bulb went off in Ken's head. He's like, Oh, the Ron Mexico <laughs> reference. Yeah, now I get it. Yeah. Him and his brother play at the same time. Okay. Hokies. I'm in with Seahawks. 
All right, so Ken is in with Seahawks. Uh, let's go to Jeff. No, well, he definitely played on this team, <clears throat> but I am wrong. Put the Eagles. I put the Eagles. Yeah, it's the because Eagles. it's what Matt has. Atlanta Falcons. Oh, it is the Falcons. Did we get your answer, Ken? They did. Yeah, he said the Seahawks. Seahawks. No, the Falcons right. do not wear purple, though. I would. I would have never gotten that. Too. Neither do the Seahawks. That, that would have been my last answer. Is you, the everyone Falcons. knew he played for a, a bird team. So yeah, the Eagles. That's a, a madness. Hmm, that's true. It's true. He likes birds, just not dogs. Uh, <laughs> question number two. What is added to the arm patch insignia and lapel pin of a U.S. Navy chief petty officer to signify that she or he has risen to the rank of senior chief petty officer? I'm in. I'm in with a guess. Mm-hmm. All right. Everyone is in with a guess. Let's go with Jeff first. Uh, I said that was a star. Uh, can you be more specific? Oh, damn. That's bad for me. Although I think I'll accept star, but I, I think, yeah. I th- if you can't be more specific, then I will accept I, star. I won't be more specific. All right. I'll accept <laughs> it. I'll accept it. All right. Uh, let's go to Ken. I went with a bar. A bar. Okay. And yeah. Matt. It's probably a nautical star, but I put anchor. Put an anchor. All right. Uh, well, the answer is a silver star. Silver star. So star is, is definitely appropriate here. Uh, okay. So we have Atlanta Falcons and silver star. Question three. In 1791, the newborn U.S. federal government levied a specific tax to help repay debts after the Revolutionary War, which led to an uprising of Pennsylvania farmers, which was called what? I'm in. I'm in, too. No. Uh, I'm in. I don't know. You guys go first so I can hear the right answer and then feel bad. (laughs) All right. uh, Let's start with Ken. I believe that was the Whiskey Rebellion, so it was Uh. Whiskey. All right, so Ken is in with Whiskey Rebellion. Let's go to Jeff. I believe I mentioned it uh, when we had the George Washington being the only president to lead troops in battle uh, as president, the Whiskey Rebellion. Mm. And Matt. I was looking in the wrong uh, direction and said Corn Revolt. Ah, the old Corn Revolt that uh, started the Nebraska Huskers franchise. Uh, It is the Whiskey Rebellion. Mm. I should know that. Now you do. I do. Matt is very familiar with whiskey, just not rebellions of the whiskey nature. All right. Question four. What is the appropriate first name of the hero of Sci-Fi Channel's Sharknado series of films played by Ian Ziering? What? (laughs) Sharknado. Appropriate? Oh, um, okay. I have a guess. I have a guess. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't know this one for the record because I've I've only seen the first Sharknado, but I did not remember this. I have not seen any of them. Mm. It's pretty entertaining. You know what you're getting when you go into it. Obviously, with a movie called Sharknado. Yeah, it's a little on the nose. Yeah. Okay, I have an answer. All right, let's start with Jeff. I said Bruce. Okay, and start. Go to Ken. I went with uh, the only shark-related thing that is also a real name and i went with finn okay Mm. matt that makes sense i put storm storm uh for some reason ken is very good at uh deducing questions it is finn Mm -hmm. that's one of his great talents that we all respect and admire in triviality at least secretly uh all right so the answer is finn question five elizabeth woolridge grant is better known by her stage name under which she released not only a self-titled album, but also the albums Born to Die and Ultra Violence. What is her stage name? So the artist Elizabeth Woolridge Grant has a stage name that we know her better by. What is it? So I, I know the I know the, uh, the theme now. So hopefully that will help me with this question, which I don't know. Yeah, that's what's nice about rounds like these, because if you can figure out the theme, it might help you find the answer to the question. I got to be careful oh. with my guesses though because I don't want to I don't want to tip these guys off with a yeah. with a really like out of left field wrong guess. No, I know what the f- thing is now. You know what the theme is? Yeah, and that makes this answer wrong. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, what would it be? Eh, whatever. I'm in. Oh, no, I know. I'll put in a bad guess. Good. All right, let's hear that bad guess right away, Jeff. Alanis Morissette. <laughs> All right. Uh all right, and let's go to Matt. Yeah, it's wrong. I said Kesha. Okay, and Ken. I believe it's Lana Del Rey. Well, you probably heard her in every movie trailer. Slow down a lot. It is <laughs> Lana Del Rey. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm on the right track here. 
Question six is kind of a local question. It's really nice that Timothy Evans uh, wrote this question in here. If I think some other people might get it just based on history, but if you don't and you're not uh, sort of a Midwest local, we oh. apologize. Elmer Lynn wow. Haldren is a Chicago-based actor whose advertising character can be reached at 1-800-588-2300. What is that character's name? General name, not a specific first and last name. So we need a general name here. If you listeners at home, uh, the jingle goes. No, don't, it'll give it away. I'm just going to say the number, though, in the okay. jingle. I'm going to read the number in the style the, the uh, advertising does it. 1-800-588-2300 blank. 588. Yep, 588-2300. <laughs> Eagle man. Eagle man. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something for do, you. Do, do, do. Uh, oh, non Chicago yeah. listeners, please, please do yourself a favor and YouTube the Eagle Man commercials for Eagle Insurance. They're so good. Is everyone in? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's start with Jeff. Uh, Empire Man or Empire Carpet Man? Okay. Ken? Empire Carpet Man. Matt? Empire Carpet Man. Is that what you thought it was going to be, Ken, beforehand? Negative. Okay. It is the Empire Carpet Man or Guy, however you want to say it. Uh, and so, yeah, the jingle goes uh, 588-2300 Empire. Yeah, and now he's a. So I think he's a golden pipes. Oh yeah. Uh, well, I, I, yeah. I'm just giving you a taste. <laughs> I cried. He's computer animated now. Yeah, he's computer animated. Is Which he, is he still with us? Uh, he is not. Mm, no, that's unfortunate. He's uh. He lives on in memory and uh, in CGI. Question seven. What is the specific name oh. of the study of baseball statistics famously used by Oakland A's GM Billy Bean? I just need a second on this one because. Um... I know it, and I, I just, I'm blanking. You might have heard this word in between bites while Brad Pitt was eating some sort of nut in Moneyball. Mm -hmm. I think Jeff was in right away. Yeah, I put Moneyball, because I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tipped his hand. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how it fits in with the theme, but I have an answer. Okay. I'm, I'm greatly bothered that I can't come up with it, because I know it, uh, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, just tap out on this one as to not give away a needless clue. All right, so Ken is tapping out. Uh, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said Moneyball? Yes. Okay, the uh, Brad Pitt film, which is about Billy Bean, so it's not far off. And Matt? Yeah, I just put, um, it's not specific to baseball, so that's probably why it's wrong. I just put analytics. Okay, uh, the answer. Yeah, that's going to kill me. Sabermetrics. Sabermetrics. Ah, I've heard that. Yes. Yep. All right, moving on to question. You got eight. the theme yet, Jeff? Nope. All right, Jeff is, has not looked at his paper once during this round, so he, he might not be uh, computing what the theme could be, but let's try this. Spencer and Weber are the last names of what two fictional characters whose 1981 wedding was watched by 30 million viewers and also by me and my mom on VHS many times? I, I can, I'll give you a small hint that... Uh, Timothy did not give us. I don't know if it's going to help you, but it might. Do you want it? Yeah. Sure. It is a famous soap opera. Mm -hmm. It's not a normal yeah, TV yeah, show. I figured that. Okay. Just letting you know. All right. So just Jeff. Oh, that was rough. Uh, I'm not putting an answer. Okay. So uh, you're tapping out? Yes, I'm All tapping right. out. Jeff is tapping out. Let's go to Ken. One with uh, Rose and Tony. Rose and mm -hmm. Tony. Okay. And Matt. I believe it's Luke and Laura. Luke and Laura. That is the correct answer from General Hospital. <sighs> That was, I, I didn't think I was going to get there. <laughs> no, great poll there, Matt. Great poll. All right. Jeff, theme? Nope. Still hasn't figured out the theme yet. Goodness. Question nine. According to the old crooner classic, Something's Gotta Give, what meets an immovable object in order to create the titular effect? Oh. Something's gotta, gotta give, something's gotta give, something's gotta give. I love uh, Sammy Davis Jr.'s uh, rendition of this is uh, quite on point, as the kids say. <laughs> the kids don't say that anymore. <laughs> You're old, Neil. Okay, I'm in. All right, everyone is in. Let's go with uh, Jeff. Uh, I believe, um, I'm going from the philosophical and not the Sammy Davis, uh, that that would be an unstoppable force. Okay, uh, let's go to... Or a measurable force or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, wait a second. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, let's go to Ken. Yeah, the phrase is unstoppable force oh, yeah. meets an immovable object, so I went with that as well. Okay, and Matt? Also unstoppable force. So I think you guys are, might be coming from it from a scientific standpoint. Uh, with this, the question, that was according to the old 
crooner classic in the song it's uh when and if an irresistible force such as you yeah okay irresistible force oh that might not be the correct lyric i just gave there but it is irresistible force such as you Mm -hmm. that's fine yeah all right so uh gentlemen look at all of your answers i'll read them the correct ones uh and uh, try to come up with this theme for question 10 so uh, your answers were irresistible force luke and laura saber metrics the empire carpet guy lana del rey finn whiskey rebellion a silver star atlanta falcons and that's it and that's it so use those answers and come up with the theme for question 10 take your time nothing no i'm not gonna bother thinking about it are you serious oh, really? yep you're gonna be so mad when you're you gonna be it. mad yeah i would i would look at your answers i'm not worried about it jeff's in he doesn't care nope do not care all right well me and ken know so yeah. okay so jeff doesn't care so you have no answer right nope okay all right let's go to matt and ken say it at the same so, time on, on the count of three wars. it's the star wars so on uh on the luke and laura question I got hung up thinking that they both had to be Star Wars names. Oh, right, right. And I almost said Luke and Jar Jar, and I know that's <laughs> definitely not. Or Luke right. and Leia. Yeah, Luke and Leia got in my head, and that's why I couldn't get to Laura, and that's why my brain was exploding. Yeah, I knew it was Star Wars after... Uh, Finn. I think yeah, Finn was the Actually, end. yeah, I was like, could his name be Finn because it's an appropriate name? And then I was like, oh, it's Star Wars for yeah, sure. Rebellion, Star Wars, then, Millennium yeah. Falcon. Uh, okay. So after that second round, uh, thank you to Timothy Evans again. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was fun. Um, the scores uh, stand right now in third place, Matt with 75. Uh, Jeff in second place with 95. And Ken uh, squ- squeaking by into first place currently with 100 points. So those are the points you guys can wager 0 to 30 of on these final five questions. I forgot there are five points apiece. Yeah, five points apiece plus a 10-point bonus, which is why you should have... Try to figure it out, Jeff. No. Uh, Timothy is disappointed in you. I'm not worried about it. Send us your letters. Okay. I'm going to give you five categories, as everyone knows. You guys uh, have the option to wager 0 to 30 points. Let's hear what these categories are, and I actually made them uh, pretty close to what the question is, so that way you can wager um, you know, correctly. So number one is going to be musical goodbyes. Mm. Musical goodbyes. Oh, question gosh, two is going to be in the category of words that start with C. Uh, number three is going to be NBA champions. Oh. Category four, famous temples. Hmm. And category number five, obligatory Spielberg question. <laughs> <laughs> so work on your wagers, gentlemen, and everyone at home. All right, the wagers are locked in. Uh, looks like we're going to go right into this final round. Question one was in the category of musical goodbyes. Here we go. In 1973, the first three words were goodbye, Norma Jean. And in 1997, the first three words were re-recorded as goodbye, England's Rose, which helped secure a Guinness World Record as the second highest selling single of all time. I want you to name the song and the singer-songwriter who co-wrote and performed both iterations. Should have bet. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was had a feeling this was going to be the question. All right. On to question two in the category of words that start with C. Pretty simple. What are the four words that start with C used in rating diamonds? Oh, thank God. Question three is in the category of NBA champions. Who is the only NBA player to win more than six NBA championships and not be a Boston Celtic? thought this was a really cool trivia fact, so I had to write a question about it. Question number four is in the category of famous temples. When getting a migraine, your temples... I'm just kidding. Huh. <laughs> famous temples. Darbar Sahib, or Harmandar Sahib, is informally known as the Golden Temple and is the spiritual and cultural center for the Sikh religion. In what Punjab city might you find this temple? Huh. And uh, question five in the category of obligatory Spielberg question. On one of my favorite filmmaking podcasts, The Director's Cut, a DJ podcast, Steven Spielberg was interviewed by fellow director Patty Jenkins about his most recent film, The Post. Patty remarked how it was exciting to see Mr. Show together on screen again. Spielberg laughed and said, 
She wasn't the first person to notice that, but it was funny because he cast these two actors separately and had never heard of the sketch comedy series Mr. Show. What two actors made up that show? Oh, I'm so sad. All of the answers are locked in, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to go through these categories and questions one more time here. So, Mm -hmm. all right. So the first question was in musical goodbyes. I was looking for the song and artist that would have used those lyrics that I described. Jeff bet zero, Ken bet 20, and Matt bet 20. So Jeff has nothing to lose. Let's start with him. Um, The song would be Candle in the Wind. And the artist, which was probably co-written with Bernie Toppin, would have been Elton John or Reginald Mm -hmm. Dwight. Ken, what was your answer? Uh, I also went with Candle in the Wind by Elton John. Mm -hmm. And Matt. Yep, Candle in the Wind, Elton John. All right, great job. So uh, it was Candle in the Wind. The original song was written for Marilyn Monroe, and then when Princess Diana tragically died, he changed it to her. (laughs) That's kind of right? Yeah. Yeah. To just change a song that already exists for somebody else to be about somebody else. He reappropriated it. Yeah, Yeah, and I think it was for kind of like a memorial for her and then yeah. uh it's crazy though it became the second highest selling single of all time behind it's I funny they own uh, that single like christmas he is yeah he is sandwiched by bing crosby which is uh bing crosby white christmas a candle in the wind and then silent night yeah. but uh billboard didn't start counting charts until 1950 and if they did it technically is the the highest selling single yeah. so mm-hmm. all right uh question two uh i was looking for the uh four words that start with c in diamonds uh it looks like jeff went big uh wagering 30 Ken also went fairly large, wagering 20, and Matt wagered zero. So let's start with Matt. Uh, Cut, clarity, carrot, and color. All right, let's go to uh, Ken. Yeah, I hope I got these all right. Cut, clarity, color, and carrot. And Jeff. Cut, clarity, color, and carrot. All right, it is cut, clarity, color, and carrot, or carrot weight. We're much smarter in these rounds. Question three was in the category of NBA champions, and I was basically looking for the only non-Celtic player to win more than six NBA championships. Um, Jeff and Ken both wagered zero, and Matt went big, uh, of course, with 30. So let's start with Jeff. Um, I don't even have a joke answer, so uh, I'll just say Jordan. He won six. Okay. Uh, Ken? The joke answer is always Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Mm. Okay, who did win six, but not more than six. And... Matt. So I thought long and hard about this one, uh, and I was thinking John Sally won five, so he was around there. Um, but I went with Big Shot Rob and said Robert Horry. And the correct answer is Robert Horry yeah. with seven. <laughs> so I've never heard of that man. <laughs> oh, it's Big Shot Rob. Yeah, he was known for being clutch at the end of games. Uh, Robert Horry is also one of only two players to have won championships with three different teams. Hey, look, he won with I the see. Houston Rockets, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the San, San Antonio Spurs. The other was John Sally with the Pistons, Bulls, and Lakers. Yeah, John Sally was noted for being like 10th man on the bench and winning titles. Uh, Horry, Horry was pretty uh, an important role in those early Rockets teams and he and some of those Lakers teams, but he was kind of just like end of the bench guy with the Spurs. Yeah, it was a crazy fact that I found. Uh, originally, the question was going to be who has won the most championships as a player. Anyone? Bill Russell. Bill Russell. And he's tied with Phil Jackson for most combined player Coaching. wins and coach wins yeah. at 13. Some trivia there for you guys. Put in your pipe. Uh, <laughs> question four was in the category of famous temples. I was basically looking for uh, in what city is the Golden Temple in in India. Uh, let's uh, let's see. Our wagers were zero for Matt, ten for Ken, and twenty for Jeff. So Matt had nothing to lose. What was your answer? No, no, no. answer. <laughs> okay, Ken. Just guess New Delhi. Okay, and Jeff. Uh, also, I guess Lahore. Okay, uh, so. No one's going to get points on that one, unfortunately. The answer is Amritsar, or Amritsar, however you pronounce it. Question five answer, uh, excuse me, question five question was an uh, obligatory Spielberg question, and it uh, basically was asking who comprised the sketch comedy series Mr. Show? What two actors? Uh, Matt bet zero, Jeff bet zero, and Ken wagered 30. Let's start with Matt. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's David Cross and some guy. I had David Cross, that's all I knew. So. Okay, and Jeff? I believe the second guy you're looking for after David Cross is Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, there All we right. go. And Ken. Yeah, I didn't know that they were both in this movie until uh, yesterday when I heard it on the radio. But regardless of that, I would know that uh, David Cross and Bob Odenkirk are the primary components of Mr. Show. It is David Cross and Bob Odenkirk. So uh, let's just tabulate some scores here. All right, so the scores have been have been tabulated. And in third place with 105 points 
is a uh, respectively played game by Jeff. Uh, now, uh, in second place with 125 is Matt. And today's cream of the crop is Ken with 160 points. But the cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a fun one. Um, yeah. Thanks to all the folks who wrote in questions for us on that one. Yeah, and uh, just a, a thank you uh, once again to all those guys. We had uh, kind of a, a Matt-centric game, I suppose, by some of our listeners. But uh, to thank these guys, we had uh, Matt Hiller, Matt Coleman, Sam Carr, Dave Maslowski, John Barry, and the entire second round written by Tim Evans. So thank you, everyone. You guys know where to find us on Twitter and Facebook at Triviality Pod. If you'd like to send in a question five submission, send one to trivialitypodcast at gmail.com with the uh, subject line question five and the host you want to read it. Uh, basically, everything you want to know about us, you can find at trivialitypodcast.com. And uh, we've had a great influx of Patreon support lately, uh, getting some of their uh, perks sent to them in the mail. So if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast and help out the show if you can. Uh, basically, uh, that was the whole game there. Thank you to everyone here in the studio, Jeff, Ken, and Matt, for playing along. And for all of you playing along at home or in your car or in the bath, we don't judge. Uh, my name is Neil, and that was Triviality. What's that? Do you have insurance on this car? No. It must be Eagle Man. I've got something for you. Oh, look at those low rates.